Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Chelsea are off to a perfect start under Maurizio Sarri. Are they primed for a title challenge? What kind of issues have they encountered this season? And will this winning run last? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're going to analyze Chelsea's opening four games. So in three out of Chelsea's four wins this season, they've come up against sides that have played in a back three, often reverting to a 5-4-1. So in today's video, we're going to break down the issues they encountered against those sides, how they overcame them. We're going to touch on Arsenal as well in that game where Arsenal played more of a 4-2-3-1. And then we're going to get to how they've changed under Maurizio Sarri, opposed to playing in a three-man back line with Antonio Conte. First, let's get to the lineups. Chelsea now more of a 4-3-3. What they get from that is Alvaro Morata up front hasn't had the best start in terms of goal scoring efficiency, but his ability to drop deep and link play and hold off defenders has been much better in comparison to his first season. Out in wide areas, we've seen a combination of different things. Eden Hazard often comes in from the left. Now he's looking to get the ball between the lines, getting that free roll, and that has helped him. We'll see if that's a benefit or not. On the right, we've seen Willian, we've seen Pedro. What roles do they offer? We're going to get to that in a second. In midfield, Ross Barkley often started on the left until Kovacic was picked up from Real Madrid. So now it's Kovacic's spot. N'Golo Conte paying more of a higher role, liking to charge forward, looking to link play, looking to make darting runs into that right channel. We'll get to that as well. And then they have Jorginho, the deep line playmaker, sitting at the base of the midfield. At the back, Marco Alonso as Piliqueta going back to a right back position and in defense they go with Antonio Rudiger and David Luiz and we'll get to why they've been significant but first things first now we have to break down how Chelsea have really fared against teams that do drop off into a 5-4-1. So Chelsea have come up against three-man back lines three times this season and all three games obviously coming victorious. Each team offered something different and it's great that we get to break it down because it gets to show what this Chelsea side is becoming and what Sarri may want them to be. When we do look at the first game, it was against Huddersfield. Huddersfield dropping into more of a 3-5-1-1, ended up turning into a 5-3-1-1. Basically, they want to ensure that Chelsea couldn't break through the middle. Obviously, that's key. Barkley starting, and then they had William and Pedro out on the flanks. The issue here is that we didn't really get to see the full Chelsea. Eden Hazard not ready to play. Ross Barkley, as great as he is, he's not Kovacic. He doesn't command the control he isn't able to really retain possession doesn't offer you that direct threat Chelsea here had problems creating chances it's been the theme of their season thus far they have scored goals in every single game haven't really conceded many but it's the, the problem with creating enough chances to win games and here a lot of it in the first half stemmed from Morata who did very well to flick players on winning the ball with his back to goal nodding it into their path we saw him do that for Ross Barkley in the in the first half Barkley was able to charge for but what happened is that Aaron Moy came across and was able to cut him off that was one opportunity that they did have there was one opportunity where Jorginho who hasn't really been mad marked yet in under um, during his time at Chelsea and what happened there is that he was able to find William between the lines Williams then able to charge forward and slide in Morata but the pass was just in behind him they were struggling to create chances they were also conceding space in an area where they have been all season the fullbacks here not as wide as many people want them to be, but they were a bit advanced. And what had happened was that if it wasn't the wing backs getting forward and behind them because they were getting sucked into play by the striker or by Pritchard, who was pushing out into those areas to win aerial duels, what happens is that the wing backs were able to push forward into that space, forcing Rudiger and Luis to offer cover. It was happening on both sides of the pitch, and there were times where Pritchard was driving into that space. But when you think about that, game in itself yes Chelsea got a goal got the winner through Nogolo Conte's 
rare goal and that did stem from a break down the left but the way that they got the penalty has been a theme of their season it's Marcos Alonso getting forward we look at it as Jorginho again having enough time on the ball Huddersfield never really looked to mark him out of the game plays it into Barkley and Barkley is able to back heel the ball into that space and you already see Alonso breaking in before he's fouled we saw that happen throughout Jorginho scored the penalty the second half was a bit of a cruise control Eden Hazard came on and really killed off the game the second team that they did face in this system also played more of a narrow 5-4-1 it was Newcastle this is when we have Kovacic into the team this is when we have Jorginho and Conte and again Newcastle didn't really offer them a threat on the counterattack because Solomon Rondon was often um, isolated up front. But what did happen here is that we really saw the issues that we have with this Chelsea team thus far. A lot of people were complaining that there isn't enough width, but they had the fullbacks forward. Sure, the fullbacks aren't getting that high. More so, a lot of people were complaining about Ospitalqueta not getting forward. But what is he getting forward to do? There's not much there, and there's no problem with having the two fullbacks fullbacks very wide kind of like how Guardiola has his in those inverted positions so that his side is sorry side is able to cope with counterattacks. that is possibly one play that they were trying to do as Piliqueta wasn't really getting forward but there also wasn't much width or play coming down that side because Hazard was tucking in Pedro often likes to tuck into that space Kovacic and Conte were a bit higher. A lot of the play was down the left and there was no reason for him to get forward. Yes, he can be an outlet to kind of shift the players out, but he didn't really get forward in that first half. What we did see Pedro drive into that space. We saw Nagolo Conte push into that space, but the problem with Chelsea here was that they were trying to push it through the middle and Rafa Benitez knew that. Eden Hazard often trying to get the ball between the lines, trying to get it there. Kovacic, like I said, a lot of control, can find those passes, a lot of triangles because Alonso was wide when he needed to be. If Alonso was narrow, you'd see Kovacic move out into that space. You'd see Hazard move out into that space, but not much really going through. When they found Hazard between the lines, what happened was that he beat one challenge in Diame, beat one challenge in Key, and then get fouled. Often fouled in that first half. There's only one opportunity where he really got the ball, was able to evade two challenges and then bent his effort inches wide of the net before he was tackled again another opportunity when he moved out more to the left hand side he gets it on the left he's able to run past Yedlin and then pull it back for Pedro but Pedro fires his shot at the keeper Chelsea were struggling to create chances and it wasn't due down to the fact that there wasn't enough width Alonso was providing the width when required as Piliqueta held the width as well not as often because they didn't really need him to because a lot of the play was going down there but again, if the play is going down the left-hand side, why does Aspilicueta need to hold the width when if the ball is coming that way, he could easily push out to the byline and stretch the play that way? So the gripe about not having enough width isn't really that valid there. But what it does mean is that they do need players out in those wider positions, more so the attacking players, if it's Pedro often driving into that space. And Pedro, for everything, everything that people want Pedro to be, we're not seeing Pedro make those darting runs in behind. A lot of the time, He's getting the ball, cutting in, and then losing possession of it, taking too many touches. He has scored some goals this season, but his overall play hasn't been as great as many expected. Willian, again, on the right-hand side, not really offering much. Always trying to drift out to the right because he's predominantly right-footed. Hasn't really offered much of a threat. This leaves a lot of Chelsea's attacking play down to the left-hand side. In the second half, they changed things up. As Piliqueta did get higher, Pedro did stay wider. Alonso and Hazard stayed wider as well, and look how they score. The how look how they get the breakthrough and win the penalty. Ball switched out to Hazard. Richie and Yedlin follow him. What happens here is that Alonso makes a narrow run into that space. Hazard pokes it into him. Fernandez tracks him and then fouls him. Penalty shot again down the left hand side for Chelsea it's been their key then we look to Bournemouth Chelsea ended up winning that game they did concede a goal later on but they were able to get a late goal through a set piece but then we look to Bournemouth and again narrow they start set up in a 3-4-3 but it ended up turning into a 5-4-1 they initially pressed at the start but what we also see from Chelsea here when they do play this system is the fact that look you, you want to press, you want to compress that space. Eden Hazard again struggled not getting the ball in that 
in that channel, in between the lines. That's been a big problem for him. But what happens here? They get the width. Now Alonso and Aspilicueta are breaking forward. They offered a threat down the flanks. That was key. The other aspect that they do have, besides Jorginho in the midfield, who were trying to play passes through that middle of the park, was the fact that this. They have... Rudiger, David Luiz, able to play long balls over the top, able to search for players that are looking to break him behind. That happened a lot in this game. Morata trying to break him behind. Um, you had William trying to break him behind Rico. That was where they were fighting the space in the first half in wide areas, over the top runs, and Chelsea looked like the better side in the first half. But once again, you get to the second half, Morata not offering much because that space is so condensed. But what we did end up seeing was Hazard holding width on the left-hand side more. What do we see first? Giroud comes on, Giroud's link-up play is able to bring players in, in those tight spaces, something that Morata does struggle with at times. Brings players in, he's able to able to link play Pedro the substitute comes on he's able to score from a deflected effort then the second goal happens and what do we see again it's another combination between um, Alonso and Eden Hazard and Hazard's able to run around the markers balls played in he's able to finish his effort Hazard has been key the center backs have offered a creative threat and then when you look at it the only problem with Chelsea here is that as great as their midfield is and this is without Jorginho being man marked and if you've watched their friendlies this week Italy's friendly this week Jorginho when man marked his teams do struggle is that the fact they don't have a goal scoring threat in midfield you look at it as a whole who can they bring on? Kovacic isn't going to score you enough goals, but he does offer you a defensive presence. Conte, energetic going forward, offers them something different with his athleticism and his energy as well. And he provides defensive cover for Jorginho, who is a bit immobile. But if they do need someone else later on in the game, or perhaps to start against a team that they know is going to sit deep, Cesc Fabregas in a higher position, able to play those final passes, able to create goal-scoring opportunities, he will play a key cog in this side when Chelsea are struggling to create or score goals then we look at the final team that they did play it was Arsenal and what happened here is the Arsenal played more of a 4-2-3-1 like I said also not really man marking um, Jorginho and what was happening here was the fact that they were able to create chances from another element of surprise they were getting balls in behind Morata scored that way through Espilicueta they were finding Willian who was able to pull out Bellerin and that allowed Alonso again to break forward and Pedro to break forward to tap in that effort but Jorginho was able to dictate play. They were able to play balls over the top. And what happened is that as they won the game, again, it stemmed from Alonso and Hazard combining. It's Hazard getting the ball, beating Lacazette, and beating Bellerin before playing it back to Alonso, making that narrow run into that space. Comes back to him, he fires a shot in. The one problem that Chelsea had in this system was down to the fact that they switched off. When they went up 2-0 in that game in the first half, they dropped into a 4-5-1, and it's pretty simple, and we'll just break it down quickly here, is the fact that Arsenal weren't really causing them any problems. But what happened was the fact that you have your players... Your wider players going forward, that is fine. But Pedro and Willian need to mark them out of the game. And that's what, what that was not what was happening here. So they have them pushing forward. The fullbacks have to push forward as well. But that allowed Iwobi and Mikatarin to charge into that space. And when they're charging into that space, look how the goals were scored. Iwobi charged into that space, pulls it back for Mikatarian to make it 2-1. Iwobi, um, Mikatarian charges into that space what happens is that a will is able to break into the box he makes it 2-2 that was how they were getting into the behind the side because William and Pedro weren't doing their defensive work once they started pressing obviously in that game Chelsea bring on Kovacic for the control he settled things down and then he brought on Hazard to finish it off but like I said when you have those two in there it helps out Jorginho you have Jorginho at the base Kovacic and Conte can offer defensive cover can allow Jorginho 
Jorginho to get forward. Kovacic is also a player that could play in the defensive too and offer the passing and control in midfield. Out in wider areas, like I said, Chelsea have a lot of questions to answer. Hazard needs to stick wide. Yes, he can have the creative freedom, but he's been so decisive when he pushes out into the wider areas and he needs to stay there. When he moves into that space where there are four or five players in around him, it's just not going to cut it for a player who doesn't score enough goals. Alonso breaking forward has been key, but Chelsea need more of an attacking threat. Will it be Morata? Will we finally see Giroud? Can he offer the all-round threat that Sarri craves? And that on the, out on the right side, Pedro's offering the goals. Willian offers something from the left-hand side. Who is it going to be? Will they be able to interchange throughout the season? It looks so far that Chelsea has their midfield intact and they have the back line intact. And like I said, if they could throw in Fabregas to offer a threat in the final third, that will help them a long way. But when you look up front, it just doesn't look like they have enough goals to help them challenge for the title. But let me know what you guys think four games into the Premier League season. Can this Chelsea side actually win the Premier League? What is their best 11? Who should be in it? And in their upcoming games, who do you think will offer them the biggest test? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.